what we're going to do using our powers of calculus is find the area of this yellow region. And if at any point you get inspired, I always encourage you to pause the video and try to work through it on your own. So the key here is you might recognize, hey, this is an area between curves. A definite integral might be useful. So I'll just set up the de definite integral sign. And so first we need to think about what are our left and right boundaries of our region. Well, it looks like the left boundary is where the two graphs intersect right over here and the right boundary is where they intersect right over there. Well, what is this point of intersection? It looks like it is negative one comma negative two. We can verify that. In this red curve, if x is negative one, Let's see, you square that, she'll get one minus three. You do indeed get y is equal to negative two. And in this blue function, when x is equal to negative one, you get one minus four plus one. Once again, you do indeed get y is equal to negative two. And the same thing is true when x is equal to one. One minus three, negative two. One minus four plus one, negative two. So our bounds are indeed, we're going from x equals negative one to x equals positive one. And now let's think about our upper and lower bounds. Over that interval, this blue graph is our upper bound. And so we would subtract the lower bound from the upper bound. So we would have x to the fourth minus four x squared plus one. And from that, we will subtract x squared minus three dx. And in many other videos, we have talked about why you do this, why this makes sense to just subtract the lower graph from the upper graph when you're finding the area between them. But now we just have to evaluate this definite integral. So let's just get down to business. All right, so we have the integral from negative one to one. And so we have x to the fourth, x to the fourth. And now we have minus four x squared. And then when you distribute this negative sign, you're gonna have, you're gonna subtract another x squared. So you're gonna have minus five x squared. And then you have plus one, and then you're gonna subtract a negative three. So it's gonna be one plus three, so it's gonna be plus four dx, dx. And just to be clear, I should put parentheses right over there because it's really the dx is being multiplied by this entire expression. And so let's see, let's find the antiderivative of this. This should be pretty straightforward. We're just gonna use the reverse power rule multiple times. So this is going to be, the antiderivative of x to the fourth is x to the fifth over five. We just incremented the exponent and divided by that incremented exponent. Minus, same idea here, five x to the third over three plus four x. And then we are going to evaluate it at one and then subtract from that, it evaluated at negative one. So let's first evaluate it at one. We're gonna get one fifth minus five thirds plus four. And now let us evaluate it at negative one. So minus, let's see if this is negative one, we're gonna negative one fifth, negative one fifth, and this is gonna be plus five thirds, plus five thirds, and then this is going to be minus four, minus four. But then when you distribute the negative sign, this, so we're gonna distribute this, over all of these terms. And so this is going to be, if we make this positive, this will be positive, this one will be negative, and then this one will be positive. So you have one fifth plus one fifth, which is going to be two fifths, that and that. And then minus five thirds minus five thirds. So minus 10 over three, and then four plus four, so plus eight. And so we just need to simplify this. This is going to be, let's see, it's gonna be eight, and then if I write, so plus, I'm gonna write these two with a denominator of 15, because that's the common denominator of three and five. And let's see, two fifths is six fifteenths. Let's, yeah, that's right, five times three is 15, two times three is six. And then 10 thirds, let's see, if we multiply the denominator times five, we have to multiply the numerator times five, so it's gonna be 50 fifteenths. And so what's six fifteenths minus 50 fifteenths? So this is going to be equal to eight minus six minus 50 is minus 44. Minus 44 over 15. And so what is 44 over 15? 44 over 15 is equal to two and 14 fifteenths. So that's really what we're subtracting. We're gonna subtract 
2 and 14 fifteenths. So if you subtract 2 from this, you would get 6 minus 14 over 15, because we still have to subtract the 14 fifteenths. And then 6 minus 14 fifteenths is going to be equal to 5 and 1 fifteenth. So just like that, we were indeed able to figure out this area.